Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney, although perhaps I don't look like it at this moment. It's really nice outside, hanging out in my little hobby farm here. I'm having a nice time and I don't want to go inside. So I look a little less professional than usual. Uh, on this channel, we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the they need from an employment attorney. It may look like I'm standing in a road. I'm not, don't worry, no one's gonna run me over. This is actually my driveway. Uh, we have a question from YouTube user Pepusa. Pepusas are delicious. I think we can all, right, consensus on that. Everyone agrees? Delicious. Ow. I just got bit by like a horse fly. The pain. Okay. YouTube user Pepusa asked us, Hey Vince, how is a pretext usually proven? What is the difference between pretext for discrimination? Ow. I'm being attacked. Ow. <laughs> uh, what is the difference between a pretext for discrimination and a pretext for wrongful termination? Thank you. So, all right, first things first, let's define what a pretext is. If an employer is trying to fire you and they don't want it to look like discrimination, they'll come up with a pretext, which is, which is some reason which is not true, but which they hope will be believable when people look at, look at your case, if you bring a case, as to why they fired you, right? So, a lot of times you'll see like, uh, some, like we'll we'll talk about like a sexual harassment claim, right? There's a lot of times that you have a sexual harassment claim, and it's really really bad, and it gives the person who's experiencing sexual harassment like serious anxiety, and they might um, they might not show up for work. That happens, right? They they might go to the hospital because things are really really bad in their life. They're afraid. They're afraid of what's going to happen if they go to work. They're freaking out because you know they're the way they earn their livelihoods at, at risk here. But also people are attacking them. And they don't know, like, when you're the victim of sexual harassment, you don't know if you're going to work tomorrow. Like, is this guy gonna try to like, force himself on me? What, what, what's gonna happen? I don't know that it's gonna stop at verbal. I mean, he's already doing really bad things. I don't know, right? So there's, there's, there's a level of fear that goes on there, right? This is just, this is a hypothetical, this is an example. And so that person might not might not come into work one day because they, you know, they went to their doctor. Because <sighs> they're freaking out. Because things are really bad. Their livelihood's in danger. Their personal safety feels like it's at risk, legitimately at risk, right? And so they might go to their doctor instead of go to work. That's a no show, no call. Now, on an average day, a no show, no call is a fantastic reason to fire someone, right? But here, where this hypothetical person is complaining of sexual harassment and the employer is not doing anything to keep her safe. And she's going to have documentation from a doctor. I went to the doctor. I went to the hospital because my anxiety tied to this terrible situation that you're not addressing. I would characterize that termination for no show, no call to not be legitimate. I would characterize it as a pretext, right? They didn't fire this person because she no showed, no called, right? They know that she had a medical emergency. She went to a doctor because of what was going on in the workplace. They know that. That's not a good reason to fire someone. They fired that person because it solved many problems for them. They don't have to properly investigate the sexual harassment anymore. They don't have to start firing people who might be otherwise valuable employees who did very bad things, right? And there's a greed motive for many employers where they're like, ah, God, this, this guy who's doing really horrible things does seem to make about 70% of our budget for the year what are we going to do? We fire this idiot. We're going to go bankrupt, right? So they have this weird greed motivation. They don't want to get rid of this guy. So it's easier for them. They can cook up a reason to fire the person. It's better for the company. Less for them to do everything. Maybe they're just, maybe, you know, a lot of family held company, you know, closely held companies really. The owner of the company is like, oh God, my stupid nephew sexually harassed someone. And I, he's, my sister will never forgive me if I fire him, but he's like, he's a real piece of shit, right? Oh, what do I do? Oh, good. There's there's some there's some stuff in in the victim's file that I can potentially work up into a termination. So that's I'll create that pretext to terminate. So that's that's what a pretext is, right? In this context, and the way to prove a pretext is always to cast doubt. So so many ways to do that. You know, any method of casting doubt is great. One of the classics is. Okay, you had, a, you had one no-show, no-call. How often do you fire people who have one no-show, no-call? 
oh, this is the first time ever. You've had you've had four no show no calls in the past two years, and three of them you didn't fire the person, but this one, who just happens to be someone who complained about sexual harassment, she gets fired. I think we've cast doubt upon that one, right? So you're always casting doubt. So comparators, you know, comparable situations, comparable, so many situated peers. How is that handled for them? Um, timing, right? The timing of events. Oh my God, you had a no show, no call nine months ago. And yesterday you complained about sexual harassment. So we got to fire you for that no show, no call nine months ago. Really? Really? Really, really? That's what we're going to do? Why didn't you fire her for nine months? It wasn't an issue for nine months. It took you nine months to figure out that you want to fire the person. And just coincidentally, she gets fired the day after she complains about sexual harassment. Right? So you, you can kind of see there's, there's going to be an endless list of ways to cast doubt on a pretext. And I know I've said this in the channel before when dealing with evidence, but like the limitation on a given trial team's ability to prove something is essentially like a limitation on human imagination. You need to think of all the ways you could possibly cause a jury to believe something. And judge, jury, arbitrator, whoever it is, anything you can possibly say that would help them to believe that, that's going to help you. And uh, I think my video is over because the farm manager is actually going to run me over. <laughs> all right, everybody. I hope this is helpful. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and take care. Bye.